Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I'm on the test server. They just downloaded a bunch of new champions into Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, are they going to be new meta champions or not? Let's take a look. So I think we've got four to look at here. Uh, the first one being the new fusion. So I did do a video on this a couple of days back uh, in terms of like first impressions. Obviously, we didn't get a proper look at the dude. There's been a, a couple of things that have come out since that video, so I will talk about that quickly here, but I'm not going to go into massive depth on this dude. Other than, like, looks like this is potentially a Pythian type of feel. It's made, I, I feel like he's kind of anti-Pythian in terms of his kits, but as he slayed him, is he like a, definitely a bit of, although to be fair, it feels more like a, like a rhino to me. But anyway, anyway, looks looks very cool. Whatever he's got, it's dead. It's over his back. It's kind of like runic detail here as well. Very sweet visual. Quite different, actually, to a lot of the odd green tries we've seen. Definitely feels a bit more, I would say, honestly, a bit more like World of Warcrafty in terms of like the type of orc that we've got here. A lot of these are, or maybe not this dude, but a lot of them are quite fierce. And, you know, this guy feels a bit cleaner, almost like the, the kind of like shaman orc. Uh, anyway, very cool. I like it. Quick 105 speed, good defense, good HP. I kind of already called out in my video, it feels like he's quite good as an anti-reviver for Live Arena, quite good for Hydra, but I'm not sure if he's going to shake too much up. One of the things that people have mentioned with his passive is that this does not work against Marishka, who's one of the biggest issues in Arena right now. Um, it also will not work against something like Hydra, like if Hydra heads die and then a new one comes back, it doesn't count as a revive. That's not the way it's coded. So you won't get like your instant A2 away from that, which would have been nice, on honestly. So there's a few places where you would love it to work where it doesn't work. But I still think it's quite a cool mechanic. I still think this still is good, cleaning off all enemy buffs, replacing it with weaken on a three turn, and it activates instantly on a revive. I like this steel as well. Accuracy, defense, and attack going out on your team, depending on the type of heroes you've got. Gay one's not bad. I'm not saying he's brilliant, but I think he's kind of half decent. So a few people are saying, you know, is he just a Rian the Conqueror, which you can get eventually for free from uh, Doom Tower normal. But honestly, that is, for the average player, that is probably like years away. So let's not assume everyone's got Rian the Conqueror. Anyway, is, is passive being against just, or not just Lizardsmen, but if this was for everybody, then this would just be better, obviously. But there was a bit of talk as well in my, my comment stats. And this one I, I hadn't realized, but Sulfurian, I forgot about this guy, uh, guy having the ability to revive, honestly. So he's also someone that you would counter, but he's not used a ton in Arena as far as I see. Definitely is kind of more about Pythian. Probably that's it. Pythian's the main one. But obviously, if, if someone like Duchess revives, you have to clean off all of those buffs as well. So definitely a decent champion, but not like top tier, it's my opinion. Uh, okay, let's get to the other new ones then. So we've got a new mythical in Lizards. Let's take a look. Wow, this dude looks weird. <laughs> this is a weird looking lizard. Okay, what is with the tape around the wings? Are they taped together so that... They don't open out in full. Is that what we're saying here? I'm not sure about all the red, honestly. Does that feel good? It's like, I guess he was wearing a proper robe and it just got shredded. Maybe as he transforms, let's see what his transform looks like. Yeah, so all the tape comes off and then he's like, now I'm coming at you. Now you're in trouble. Now I'm feeble. Hierophant. Lazarus. Okay. I kind of like the, f the funky face, honestly, on, on this form. Anyway, what's going on with this dude? So incredibly fast, 115. Top speed for Raid Shadow Legends. This guy hits it. Um, he's a support unit, but he turns into an attack base unit. This sometimes is a big problem with these type of mythicals. It's like you basically just got to decide which hero you want, I think. Like, and, and for me, the whole point of a mythical is. It all makes sense. It all works together. But this one, I haven't even read the kit yet, but the fact that he turns from support to offensive, look at the base attack when he goes. Like, 
feels like he's probably going to need different gear for the different things. So you end up just saying, well, which one do I want to be? Anyway, so on the support side, A1 attacks an enemy, places a shield on the most injured ally for two turns. That's weird terminology for them. Normally they would say the ally with the lowest HP or whatever, but most injured. I guess it means the same thing, but weird that they're, they're writing it differently. The value of the shield is proportional to this champion's attack. Okay. So maybe that does then synergize with the second form if you're building attack to do his stuff. A2 attacks all enemies. Before attacking, puts block debuffs on all, all allies. That's cool for two turns on a three turn. It's nice. Also uh, decreases the duration of all buffs on all enemies by two turns. After attacking, puts block, duff, uh, block buffs on all enemies. This feels like an arena type skill. Protecting yourself, exposing the enemy. You should clean all buffs off if it's two turns and put block buffs in its place. There is a, a kind of affinity thing here as to whether it will land or not because it is a hit. We've then got turn me to feel. Build turn me to allies by 20% and decreases enemies by 20%. So this is a nice support turn me to um, flip. Then gives them increased attack and strengthen. Very weird combination, honestly, but I guess it works for damage. We've then got the change. And what's the passive? At the start of this champion's turn, puts perfect veil and increase accuracy buff on them for two turns. That's pretty, pretty nuts. It's three turn cooldown on it, so it's only happening once. Also, this champion receives 3% less damage for every 750 attack they've got, up to 30%. So if you just stack his attack, he's taking 30% less damage. Plus he gets a veil, which is, I think that's 15% or is it 25% less damage? One or, one or the other. So his, his inbuilt survivability is kind of nuts. At the end of this champion's turn, revive a random ally. Oh, this is the three turn cooldown. So it, this always happens. This is the three turn cooldown. Revive a random ally with 50% HP and turn meter and give some perfect veil. That's pretty nuts. That's pretty nuts. Okay. And then we, when we flip, oh, what's this aura here? Speed in all battles, 25. That's huge. Okay, let's flip. So when it becomes the offensive, we've got double hitter. First hit increases this champion's attack by 3%. Stacks to 30. That's huge. The second hit decreases to 3% of the target's attack or defense. Or destroys max HP depending on their type up to 30. I mean, it's small increments, really, 3%. You know, you've got to hit 10 times to max this out. You've got to hit 10 times to max any of this out. There's not that many encounters where it's going to happen. Uh, and he feels like he's an arena type of champ to me, but I guess you could use him in boss fights. Um, A2 attacks all enemies, ignores shield, ignores increased defense. Before attacking, removes all debuffs from this champion, increases this champion's, uh, this attack's damage by 15% for each debuff removed. Okay. It's situational. If no debuffs were removed from this champion, increase this, this attack's damage by 15% for each ally alive instead. So you can get like 45% more attack damage in like an arena fight. I mean, this should do colossal damage. It still doesn't ignore stone skin and you know, it will hit reaction and all that sort of stuff. So the, the normal problems we've got with arena right now is still there with this. It's not ignoring any of that stuff but it's a it sounds like a pretty nutty skill to me and then we've got the but the thing is it's all about multipliers right so but he should with his stacking he should be pretty nuts we then got the a3 flame vulcan double hitter ignores ally protection strengthen and shield as well as 30 percent defense before attacking steals 50 percent target turn meter cannot be resisted so stone skin would still negate this but once stone skin is gone this should kill anyone. Should kill anyone if it's got any sort of multipliers. As long as he's not like a Lil, this kit is just full damage. Especially with this base attack. If his multipliers are half decent, he should kill anyone. Then we've got a passive as well. At the start of this champion's turn, so when he's morphed, yeah, don't forget, that's the start of his turn, I think. Does that count? Maybe it doesn't count, actually. Maybe you would have to have another turn for this to count. We'd have to test that. Puts increased attack and crit damage on them for two turns. And then the three turn cooldown on this side is 
increases the cooldown of all enemy steals by two whenever this champion kills an enemy. So you take out a squishy, everybody else gets locked out. That is a very cool active. If this champion kills two or more enemies in a single attack, this effect will only act activate once. This effect cannot be resisted. So I guess this can be resisted, but if he kills two, it cannot be resisted. Speed in all battles as well. I mean, look, it sounds nutty. It's all down to what his multipliers can do, because if he can't kill stuff, then the passive's kind of irrelevant. And, you know, all of this stuff's irrelevant. But he does need accuracy unless that cannot be resisted stuff pops up for some of this stuff. But yeah, very, I mean, on paper, very cool. Obviously, we don't get a lot of mythical champions on our accounts and stuff. The shard price is still obscene. So, but if you do pick him up, it sounds like he's going to be cool. Perhaps we'll test him and, and see if he's going to do loads of work. Okay, two down, two to go. Let's see what we've got. Dark Elf is another mythical. Uh, Aphidus. Aphidus. What's going on with this dude? Kind of looks a bit like Dark Carol, doesn't he? Or am I going, am I going mental? Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. At a moment there. Okay, so we've got another mythical here. He's got a very long pointed sword. Nice long hair. Let's see what happens when he flips. He turns into a bug. He turns into the Scarab King. Oh, it's an aphid. Okay, so it's Aphidus, the Hive Lord. This is a weird combo for me. Why are Dark Elves like, why do they have anything to do with bugs? I don't really get the, the, um, the thing there. What's the bug connection? Let me know down below. Why, why are Dark Elves bugs? Anyway, so Aphidus, the Hive Lord. What's going on with his kit? Crazy base stats again. Uh, attack base, does he, and he turns into defense base. Like, come on. Um, I mean, this one makes sense as a defense base, I guess. He's basically a scarab lord at this, at this point. Um, let's see what the attack base one does. Attacks an enemy, puts perfect bail on an ally with highest attack. Okay. A2 attacks all enemies before attacking, gets a self buff. Very nice for live arena, very nice for damage in any way. Then increases the duration of all enemy debuffs by a turn. Okay. Second AoE hit instantly activates burns on each enemy. Damn, that's a crazy skill. If an enemy's not under burn, puts a burn on them for two turns. This is like anything like this where it's instantly activate burns, instantly activates poisons. Just it becomes end game viable. Like you're basically popping damage on lots of enemies at the same time. It does a lot of work. So this is pretty cool. He's got his transform there. Each time this champion places a burn, decreases the target's defense by 3% up to 30. That's kind of nuts as well. Uh, think about that in Hydra, that's going to be nutty. But each burn debuff on the enemy team increases this champion's crit damage by 10% up to 100%. So that, the only time you ever get that is like a spider really. But in Hydra, you're going to get 40% more damage or more crit damage. It's not bad. Whenever an HP burn activates, increases this champion's attack by 5%. So again, in Hydra, very quickly, you're going to have an extra 50% attack. It just means he should be doing colossal damage if his multipliers are good. So when he flips then into this bug, what's going on? Becomes defensive. Got very high base defense at nearly 1,500. Maybe the highest in the game, actually. Might be a few over 1,500, but that's pretty nuts. Places increased accuracy on an ally with the lowest accuracy. That's a weird one to do because generally if you've got low accuracy, it's because you don't need it or you don't want it. So actually, I don't like that. If anything, like if you're going to use him to make someone very powerful, then you kind of need to do it on everyone because it's very, I guess you can position where you want this to be, but it probably is not going to end up where you want it to be. You've got an A2, attacks all enemies, stuns the enemies, but continuous heals on if, oh, on allies for two turns if no stuns were placed. So I guess if you're fighting Hydra and you can't stun an enemy or a boss, you're healing instead. If not, you're going for a stun. It's okay. Um, the A3 is a provoke for one turn. Strengthen on this champion, increased defense on allies. Does that, um, I guess that gives him increased defense as well. Three turn cooldown on a full provoke. Not bad. Not crazy though. And then it's passive. When attacked, 100% chance of placing weakened 
and 35% chance of stunning the enemy. That's quite cool. Increases his champion's defense by one point for every two points of attack in, when in their alternate form. So I'm not sure how this works. I'm not sure if you can stack up your attack with this, gain the 50% more. So let's say you had 7K, you get 50% more, plus you get your self buff or, or like your, yeah, your self buff. You could end up being on colossal numbers of attack. So when you flip, does it still remember what your attack is? Does that stay? If it does, then you can end up getting a ton of extra defense from this, like thousands of extra defense. So the passive is cool. Form one is cool. I think the rest of this kit is pretty average in the, in the bug form, but definitely this passive is kind of nuts. So yeah, let me know what you think of this one. The aphid. Last one then is a Sylvan Watcher. And it's a rare. Okay, two mythicals, a legendary and a rare. So this is a champion fragment fusion. So this won't be anything to do with the fusion. They're just adding another rare, I guess. I, I was saying to, to a couple of guys from Fateless the other day, like one thing that Raid do really nicely is shields. Like just the, the attention to detail around, you know, just this shield isn't like my favorite shield in the game or anything like that, but just the attention to detail for like, you know, the runic type of feel to it and stuff. Even on a rare, it's not bad, is it? Not bad. The sword. It's not their best work, but it's not bad. Um, okay, so for a rare... Huge amounts of defense, like nearly 1,300 defense, 102 speed. It's pretty good. Uh, attacks an enemy, puts increased accuracy on this champion, small version. A2 is a stun, 50% chance to stun. It's not bad for faction wars, I guess. And then A3 attacks all enemies. Four attacking, puts the weak, weak source increased defense on all allies. Which, again, kind of depends on multipliers with this, but... That's not a bad skill for Faction Wars. That's not a bad skill. It's not, it's not going to be anything great unless this absolutely tanks someone to death. But um, yeah, mediocre, rare, rare. And actually this faction's got good rares. So yeah, in terms of like a filler champion for Faction Wars or whatever, it's not bad. You've already got, to be fair, another good defensive uh, unit in this, this faction. So yeah, don't know. Did it need it? Probably, maybe. I'm not sure. It needs to be fleshed out a bit, I guess, compared to other factions. So I guess we'll see a few more coming down the line. Comment down below, which champions do you actually want me to play test? I'm away this weekend in Prague with Lady H. So I'm going to be pre-recording a couple of videos over the next day or two. Um, yeah, let me know which ones you'd like to see. Anyway, I've been Hell Hades. Enjoy your day. See you later.